So how does a man get involved with the CIA, like one of the top agencies on the planet? Like how does if you got to be recruited or do you sign a form or do you put an application in? Like how does that come about? There's a lot of different ways that CIA picks you up. It's not that different from MI6 or Mossad or SVR or anyone else. Uh, you some most people apply to CIA because most jobs at CIA are not undercover jobs. Most jobs at CIA are analysts or logisticians or mathematicians or engineers, and none of those people are undercover. Or if they are undercover, it's a very, very small percentage of people who are undercover. So their, their tax receipts say that they work for CIA. Their address on their lease says that their employer is CIA. They work for CIA, and there's nothing secret about it. And the vast majority of people apply through an online portal. Then there are some people who, are, who apply slash are invited from college fairs. So your high-performing college students or your bilingual or multilingual college students, they might get a visit from a CIA recruiter at a university. And then that recruiter says, hey, here's my card, here's my phone number, why don't you submit a resume? And then that recruiter can earmark the resume and try and get it uh, uh, streamlined in. And then you've got the classic uh, military direct recruiting. So a lot of CIA officers are former military. The government has our entire profile. When you're a military person, the government knows everything about you. So CIA really just kind of does a handshake with the government, with the military, and then they pull you over or they ask you if you want to come over and it's no break in service. It's a really simple transition. Uh, and then the last way is similar to the way that I got recruited, where you're going about a, a life on your own and that life gets interrupted by CIA. For me, I was trying to leave the military and join another part of the federal government. I was trying to join the Peace Corps and my application was flagged and then I got a phone call. Some people have the same thing happen when they're trying to move from the corporate sector to a different corporate sector or if they're trying to move in the on the law side of the house. Some people get pulled out of FBI. So, but a lot there are times rarely when CIA finds you in your daily life and then they ask you to come and that's a that's an invitation most people say yes to but you you've got to be cream of the crop then so as a ci watching then universities colleges to see who the top of the the top of the tree is to say recruit him yeah because absolutely. obviously they want the best of the best correct and uh, it, you, it i think anybody who thinks that cia would not be watching is silly because everyone is watching mm -hmm. Booz Allen Hamilton is watching, Deloitte is watching, Google is watching, Salesforce is watching, everybody watches, Amazon is watching, everybody, the, the top law firms in America, everyone is watching talent in their industry and especially at university. So of course CIA is there doing the same thing. Not because they're trying to steal people or ruin people's lives or, or lie to people and trick them, but because they're looking for elite talent, just like you said. So it's not like men in black sort of things, people coming in black suits, secret handshake, listen, CIA, like secret tests and bunkers, like there's none of that, then it's not like They're, some James Bond shit. Yeah, no, the movies have to make it look a whole lot more interesting than it really is. Mm -hmm. It is secrets, but here's the thing. Real secrets, really important, powerful secrets are very, very boring. They're not exciting. Most exciting things don't have to be secrets. The real secrets are extremely dull, boring things. Like for example, the, 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 mis, the nuclear yield on a warhead in, you know, one of the station, in one of the uh, squadrons in Cheyenne, Wyoming, that is a classified secret. Like how much is the yield on the third warhead in the second missile in the fifth squadron in Cheyenne, Wyoming? How boring is that detail? Nobody cares about that. We want to know you know, who's Count sending, GFG. yeah, exactly, right, right, we want to know about drug smuggling in Panama to fund human trafficking in the United States, real secrets are not sexy, real secrets are not interesting, real secrets are secrets that we're protecting from foreign governments, so all the stuff that you see in the movies, they could never make a movie about a real spy, because the movie wouldn't sell, it wouldn't be interesting, and most of the time, everything the spy does would be completely overlooked and ignored, because they are operating in secret. And if they're doing it well, nobody ever pulls a gun, nobody goes by their real name, nobody drives a nice car, nobody wears a nice suit. And for sure, nobody gets laid. T totally under the radar then. Yeah. What about, uh, how many people are in the CIA? So I think that the total, I think the total population of CIA is like 10,000. 
That's a lot, though. It's a lot. That's but an it's, army in it's, itself. Yeah, but it's it's not as much as you know a Google or an Amazon out there where you've got seventy thousand employees or fifty thousand mm-hmm. employees. Uh, but I think it's ten thousand people at CIA, and I want to say that approximately a thousand of them are undercover. So ninety percent of CIA is not undercover. People po- possibly in offices and just tighten away looking for new recruits. <laughs> <laughs> How does a, a man like yourself then top his craft in the military? Like that's a, a high ranking job, is it not? But working with the missiles. So how does what was the attraction for you in the CIA? Yeah, so the uh I didn't like being in the military. I don't I don't like having short hair. I don't like shaving my face. I don't like having shiny shoes. I didn't do well in the military. It wasn't a good fit for me. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to leave and I was trying to go into a place where I had more freedom. I, like I said, I've been on a 42 year journey to try to express myself. So when the when the agency asked me to come to CIA, they're a civilian organization with government uh, roots, and they're largely, they let you be pretty independent as long as you operate within the confines of their rules, because it benefits them. It benefits them to have a diverse workforce where people might go to you know Kenya, or people might go to Bogota, or people might go to Canada, who knows where. So they want a diverse workforce. So the appeal for me was I still get to be in the government and I get to say, even if I just said it to myself, I get to say to myself at night, I'm in the CIA. Like I'm undercover working covert missions for the CIA. All of that was very attractive to me compared to being in the military or compared to a low paying job uh, working in the Peace Corps in the in some of the hardest conditions in the world. Was it easier for you to get into the CIA because you're coming from military background? Or is it better being an unknown and nobody knows your history to get in? So it's hard for everybody. It's just different types of hard. So for me, it was very fast. I had a top secret SCI clearance, which is one of the highest clearances you can get in the military. And it's the minimum uh, clearance that you need to have as a CIA field officer. So I was I already had the clearance. That saved me like 11 months of recruiting time because a normal person who's not military, they have to vet the person, review the person, interview the person. And then after all of that is done, then they can start the process to get them a clearance. And the clearance process alone can take nine months. So I was done with all the clearance piece, all of the health requirements, all of the mental stability requirements, everything was in place. So when I got interviewed by CIA, it was really just a couple of interviews to make sure I was uh, a sound fit psychologically, a couple of interviews to make sure that I could, you know, write a report and, and have enough social skill that I could get a secret if I needed to. And then, uh, you know, essentially that was it. A a few fit type of interviews, kind of like getting a job in a, in a career field. They were very rigorous, but it was only two or three. Mm -hmm. Some people might come back five or six times. And depending on how people do with a polygraph, again, I came from the military, no drugs, no history of crime. Easy for me to get through a polygraph. Somebody who goes to a normal college and someone who has a normal first five or seven years, they most likely have a misdemeanor somewhere and they most likely have done drugs at some time. And that makes it incredibly complicated to go through the polygraph process. So when you're doing the test and stuff, obviously you can go online now and do tests to see how smart you are or see what kind of letters you've got and these sort of things in your, besides your name. But see when you go through it, the Jap- seem you do the mental side of things for these tests, are the, is it to see if you're sane, insane? That, and so I'm going off course here, but see when before you get recruited, do you think they already had a job for you or did they judge that once you've done all the tests? They judge it once you have all the tests done. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Because you can't make a sound call, a high probability call about someone's capacities until after you've put them through very uh, standardized, stringent testing. Mm-hmm. Uh, So CIA knows that there are broad strokes that they're looking for, right? They're looking for people who are ethically flexible. If someone is really ethically rigid, they're not going to do well at CIA. Because in some countries you're going in and you're killing terrorists. In some countries you're going in and you're bribing officials. In some countries you're going in and you're setting uh, narco traffickers to fight each other. It's an ethically ambiguous job. It's not as easy as you know, being a public school teacher where it's all very cut and dry and you know what's right and you know what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So they know for sure that they want to recruit people who are ethically flexible. They know for sure they want to hire people who are interested in international events, current events, geopolitics. So they have some broad strokes that they start with, 
But then when they put you through the really rigorous testing, then they get your they get your IQ, they get your personality type, they get your your uh, tolerance for stress, they get your tolerance for ambiguity or for ambiguity. Once they have all of those tolerances, then they can kind of match you into a very high probability good fit job. Sometimes they're still wrong, but they have confidence, a, a, a smaller margin of error for putting you into something that's wrong. Why do they do the polygraph tests? Because you, when you are at CIA, you know things nobody else knows. In many ways, you're the only one who knows it until you tell somebody else. So the way that CIA works is a, a, a field officer will go meet with an asset, collect a secret, and now that field officer is the only person who has that secret. He's the only person or she's the only person who knows where the terrorist is going to be sleeping tonight, right? The polygraph is there because CIA needs to test every recruit to show that they are an honest person un and a loyal person under the right constraints. So you can be lying to everybody, but CIA wants to make sure that while you're lying to everybody, you're telling the truth to them. That's why the polygraph is so pivotal.